I have some information that is so wonderful because the world is in a very special place today. We're in a process of undergoing an evolution, an evolution that will change the world, and it's happening right now. And so I'm very happy to be here because tonight I will talk about the evolution. And tomorrow I will tell you about how powerful you are. Each one of you is very powerful. And when you know that power, we can create heaven on earth. And that is what we come here to do, is to create heaven for all of us. And so thank you for being a wonderful people that will make change for our world. Thank you. But to start, I have a, what you say, good news and bad news. First, the bad news. Civilization, as we know it, is coming to an end right now. Now the good news. Civilization, as we know it, is coming to an end right now. <laughs> this is the good news for a very important reason. Because we're looking around at the world and we see many crises. We see uh, global climate change. That's why it's so wonderfully summertime here in October. Global climate change. We see peak fuel crisis. We're running out of fuel. We're running out of food. We're changing the environment. Things like we saw in Mexico where the Gulf was on fire. We also saw in Japan the destruction of the nuclear plants. All of these things are destroying the environment. And now science has given us a fact. And the fact is this, that we are facing our own extinction. Five times in the history of this planet, life got wiped out and started all over again. We call these mass extinctions. The pre previous five mass extinctions were due to things like comets or asteroids coming from the sky and destroying the Earth. But today, science tells us that we are in the sixth mass extinction. We are losing species of organisms faster than ever in the history of this planet. And the cause of this mass extinction is human behavior. We are destroying the world from underneath ourselves. And so why is this important? Because it is human behavior that can change the world and bring it back to the garden that it used to be. So when we look at the world, we see that it is coming to an end as we know it. And yet this is very important because if we don't change who we are, then it is clear that we will all go extinct in a very short time. They tell us that the fish will be out of the ocean. There will be no fish in the ocean in 30 years. 30 years, an Earth with no fish in the ocean. It's almost unbelievable. And why is this important? Because we must do something about this. So let me tell you an important understanding. I will show you a pattern of history. And if you see what the pattern is all about, you can make a prediction of where we are going. So the first understanding is this. This is not the first civilization to come to an end. In Western civilization, we have seen civilizations come and go. So if we go over the history of Western civilization, we see that first there was a period called animism, then polytheism, then monotheism, and the one we are in today is called scientific materialism. But this one is coming to an end, and a new one is to begin very soon. And I say, well, what controls or what determines the life cycle of a civilization? Well, a civilization is like a living being. A civilization is born, a civilization matures, and then a civilization goes into old age and dies. And this has been repeated before over and over again. So if I wanted to tell you about a life cycle of a civilization or the life cycle of a human, it's the same story. 
A civilization is born, and then this is a period of development. Then the civilization gets mature, and this becomes a time for rigid beliefs. So this is like when a child is trying out all different things, a period of development. We try things. But as we get older, then our beliefs become like concrete, and we hold a very rigid belief. This is why there's a problem between parents and children. Parents have a rigid belief and say, this is the way to do it. And the children are trying all kinds of experiments. So this is a standard way of growing up to maturity. But here is the problem, and the problem is this. We live in a universe that is always changing. The universe is dynamic. It always is on the move. So you can't have a rigid belief in a world that is always changing. Because if you hold a rigid belief, then we have challenges. The challenges that we face in our world today are because of the old beliefs that we hold as being true. And the result of the challenges is the civilization begins to go down and decline, and that's when it dies out. And I say, well, what are we going to do about this civilization? And the answer comes from the famous man Albert Einstein. And he said, we cannot solve the problems with the same thinking that created the problems. And this is why this is so important now, because the crises that we face are not accidents. The crises collectively tell us that we are creating an evolution, because crisis causes evolution. So we are facing this crisis. We must change, and that change is evolution. So it says, well, what are we going to do? And I say, just because the civilization comes to an end, it doesn't mean the people die. But when that happens, a new civilization begins and then starts up. And the new civilization begins before the old civilization is gone. And the young people who are creating the new civilization are called creative minorities, or sometimes we call them cultural creatives. These are the people with new ideas that can help us create a new civilization and lead us out of the problems. If you are in the audience today, you are part of the cultural creatives because you are looking for new answers. You're seeking another way. How can we survive on this planet? We can't follow the old belief anymore. We must seek something new. So all of us here are thinking and looking for a new way to survive on this planet. So to tell you how we understand the nature of a civilization, I would talk about the concept of, uh, excuse me one second. OK. Uh, OK. <laughs> the civilization that we're in, I'll explain it now, is that we came from the Greek civilization, the belief of two philosophers. There are two philosophers that have shaped the world that we live in. One of the philosophers is Democritus. If you don't know his name, he's the guy that said that the universe is a physical machine. It's made out of matter. He said that the structure of the universe is created from atoms. Atoms in Greek means uncuttable. So that means the smallest particles of the universe are atoms. And he said that everything we see is made out of atoms, so that the physical world is the most important part. He talks about the space between you and me. He says, nothing is in here. There's nothing in this space. So he talks about the space as a vacuum. There's nothing here between you and me, just the physical world. And then he explains, where does life come from? Well, he talks about movement, and movement is life, and he said, movement results from atoms hitting each other like in a billiard game, where one ball hits another ball and then hits another ball, and all the balls are moving. That's where life comes from. So atoms hit each other and create life. At the same time that Democritus was giving us this story, there was another philosopher with a different story. That philosopher was Socrates. But he had what we call a dualistic philosophy. Socrates said, that there's an invisible world. And he talked about this invisible world as vitalism, 
a vital force, a soul, a spirit, a form. He said, it's invisible. You can't see it. And he said, this invisible world was here before this physical world and will always be here. So the invisible world, the vitalistic world, was here before we got here and will be here after we go. He also said that this invisible world was perfect and ideal. So uh, he said, in your imagination, for example, I ask you, can you imagine a perfect circle in your head? Can you imagine a perfect circle? Yes, in my head, I can imagine that. But if I give you a pencil, can you make a perfect circle, a physical circle? And the answer is no. So the issue is this. The vitalistic world is perfect. The material physical world, well, that's called a corrupt shadow of the perfect world. So that the invisible world of spirit and form and vital forces is a perfect world, and yet the world of matter and people and physical things is a corrupt shadow of that perfect world. Well, these are two fundamental beliefs. One believes in the material world as primary. The other believes in the invisible world as primary. And ever through, throughout history of civilization, cultures have been divided whether they believe in the physical world or whether they believe in the spiritual world. And this is what I'm going to show you the pattern of what happened during civilization. So we can get a result from Democritus and Socrates about how life is controlled. Uh, use a picture of a cell to represent life. And I say, life can be controlled from the outside coming in, or life can be controlled from the inside expressing itself outward. If you believe that life is controlled from the outside, then you believe in Socrates and you believe in spiritualism. But if you believe life comes from the inside, then you believe in Democritus and Adams and the concept of materialism or mechanism. And these are two totally different beliefs. But over history, sometimes we believe more in the mechanical world, and sometimes we believe more in the spiritual world. And so I will show you what happened during civilization. So if I made a, a, a gradient, uh, and I say this is a spirituality, and I ask the public, I say, do you believe in spirituality as being primary or not? I can rate whether you believe in spirit, spirituality. If you don't believe in spirit, spirituality, you're down here. If you believe spirituality is everything, you're up here. I can show another chart, but this is based on materialism. If you don't believe matter is important, you're up here. But if you think matter is everything, then you're down here. But I can put these two charts together. And then I can create a balance between spirit and matter. And here is where you believe that matter and spirit are equal in their value. And I say, so where, where does a population stand in regard to spirit and matter? And here's the most important understanding of what shapes the civilization. It's called the perennial questions. These are questions that humans have asked for 10,000 years. The questions are, how did we get here? Why are we here? And now that we're here, how do we make the best of it? Now, here's what's important. 